you know, I, I'm a child of the 80s and 90s here in Atlanta. And if you were a kid in the 90s in Atlanta, that was prime time, prime time. You yeah. know, playing for the Falcons, playing for the Braves. So a huge primetime fan. Uh, but now, Coach Prime is the real deal. It's Saturday, a.k.a. the greatest day during the greatest time of year. Nothing like a college football Saturday. There's a great slate we have. Uh, make sure you check out all the videos we put out this week, full-length shows and breakouts uh, to get more previews. But this is our Saturday game day special, and we could not be more excited. We had Jeff Foxworthy last week, came in hot, set a big standard, yeah. wow. picked Duke, and we weren't dribbling a basketball. That's, that's mm. pretty impressive. But we thought, hey, we might as well get another Jeff in here that knows a little thing or two. Come on now. He's been the head coach at Temple. He's been the head coach at Georgia Tech. He's, been, he's coached tons he's of big places, coordinated one of the best in the business, and he took some time out of his busy day to hang out with, this, with us. That is Coach Jeff Collins rocking the J-Boy show. Let's see that rocking sweatshirt. Rocking the J-Boy show. Flex Look at on that, him. man. How about Old that? Let's go, That's exactly baby. right. I got That's that one in the closet, That's still too. one of my favorite ones to I rock. I love that. Great yes. fit. One, it is one of the best hoodies I own. Oh, let's go. <laughs> All right, good. That's our Saturday special. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, Coach, uh, you know, the week one full slate, I know we had week zero, which I think that's the worst term in sports. I'm not sure. going to get into that again. Uh, but it was a great week one slate. We had some upsets. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, and as somebody that's obviously, you know, understands the game at, at one of the highest levels that you can, the new clock rule, right? The change, and then it's more like the NFL, right. where, where the clock runs uh, after first downs, unless it is under two minutes going into halftime or under two minutes going in, uh, towards the end of the game. You know, I had, I had an SEC assistant text me uh, before the year saying that this this rule change will have more impact on the game uh, than any that's been made in a long time. Have you seen the same results kind of a lot of other people have seen? Well, one of the first things is the first game in week zero was Notre Dame and Navy. And that was the first litmus test of that rule and that game flew by. Absolutely. I mean, that thing was, I think they had like eight total possessions each. And obviously you're going to have that in a triple option offense. And Notre Dame was running the ball. But uh, it, it's made an impact. It just one of the uh, biggest things is, I don't know how much it sped up the game because they're just filling it with commercials. Yeah. So it's not really, you know, I think it's taken away a little bit of the product uh, on the field and uh, just to sell more ads. And I don't know if that's what, uh, the people really want. They want to see some ball. That's that. Tell me your uh, potato chip bag. It's called the theory. potato chip bag theory, Coach. You know, every okay. year you get fewer and fewer potato chips in the bag, but the bag yep. stays the same size and the price goes up. It's amazing. You get fewer yep. chips. That's what we're dealing with here in college football. Got to think it's the best way to explain it. Potato chip bag theory. Yeah. Potato and, chip and, bag theory. You know, obviously, when you look at, at the teams that want to run the ball, teams yeah. that want to possess the ball, it helps them out. What, what I find it the, the most interesting is if you're a team that goes at warp speed, right, like a Tennessee or a UCF, or an Oklahoma, or a Jacksonville State, the, the methodology of, you know, if you went three and out three times in a row, yeah, the defense is going to be out in the field uh, a long time. But now, do, do you kind of rethink going that fast all the time? Because if you go three three and outs now, or four three and three three out of four drives, you go three and out, yeah. that defense is going to be on the field even longer, and you're going to lose that much more time in possession. And I think regardless of the rule, I think that's always the 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 balance that you've got to strike when you run in a tempo offense. And uh, just having – knowing your team, knowing the situations that the defense is being placed in, and maybe having to adjust. Um, and that's with this new clock rule or without. Yeah. No, I just I, – I, I wanted to ask you because I, I found it fascinating. Coach, I want to pick your brain here. I mean, you coached in the ACC. Some big momentum last week. Florida State with a big win over LSU. And then, you know, we've seen Clemson really run that conference for a long time. Duke with a huge home win over Clemson. Riley Leonard's a real deal at quarterback. Big win for Mike Elko. What are your thoughts right now for the ACC and especially those, those few programs there with some big wins and a loss for Clemson? Yeah, well, I think everybody knew Florida State was going to be good this year, but I don't think on a national scale people knew they were going to be that good. Mm -hmm. And I was in, you know, talking about week one, I went and did a Big Ten tour this past weekend. I was at Michigan State Friday night, uh, the Michigan State game. I was at, in the big house on Saturday, mm -hmm. and I turned on the game watching Florida State LSU, and there's Keon Coleman, the receiver, the best player in the game, 
And uh, I just was thinking, you know, I could have seen him live and in person in East Lansing on Friday night. Yeah. But this this transfer portal rule has kind of changed the game. And I think Mike Norvell has done a great job uh, embracing it, getting some real difference makers uh, in that program. I, I think they're going to be a problem for for everybody moving forward. They're really good. Yeah. So you saw Michigan play in person on Saturday? I was in the big you, house. You didn't Saturday. have to watch it on Peacock. <laughs> okay, because the rest of us had to watch on Peacock. How'd they I look in live. person, Coach? How'd they look in person? So, uh, I, you know, I'm blessed to be able to get sideline access pregame for both of the games. And I was just walking around the field seeing, seeing, saying hey to some of my buddies. But they are noticeably, uh, noticeably big. That roster, the depth, the size, the athleticism – uh, you know, it's palpable when you see it in person. And I, I think I've told you guys before, I went to Athens during spring ball. Yeah. And the roster and the culture that Kirby's built is incredible. And when I'm looking at that Michigan team just standing there live and in person, it reminded me of what's what's being built <laughs> in or what's been built in Athens. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how they do throughout the season, uh, through the championship, and when they get to the playoffs. Well, I picked him to win the whole thing. Get gassed up, Kevin. Get excited. Ah, make that face here, at him. Make that face at him, dog. It's already in the bag, you know what? Dave. Just yeah, calm down. Already congrats the on the natty, no, Dave. Congrats, congrats the on the natty, bud. Settle down. That's just that's just a head ball coach telling you what he's seeing firsthand is all. But you well, know, look, I'm we got we got here, just my mind. We got told by a scout at SEC Media Days they could have seven offensive linemen drafted off this mm-hmm. team, which is ridiculous when you think so about there, it. So there was an NFL scout that I was hanging out with during pregame warmups. He said there's 25. Michigan football players, they're actively scouting right now. That's a lot. That's a good. 25? They're good. Boys good. Hey. Some picks? You wanna do- uh, I want to I ask them about Colorado real quick, though, because I, I this is something that, you know, and we're going we're gonna to talk about Colorado and Nebraska in a second, but and, and it's only one game in. You're going to have overreactions, you know, after week one. But but something we talked about on the show is, you know, timing is everything in life. And, and we see this, we saw this a lot in junior college before the transfer portal. You wanted to get guys in to go through spring because it's so different to be able to get a guy to go through spring rather than him coming in the summer, then having to kind of, you know, learn the playbook, try and build that chemistry with his teammates. But what we're seeing with Deion Sanders at Colorado, basically just flipping the whole house HGTV style. Big win against TCU. We'll see how long it can last. But between watching the way this team's built, Coach, and watching Travis Hunter play 120, what, nine, nine snaps, something like that, I've never seen this before. So, like, I don't, I don't know how long it can last. Just what are your thoughts on it off the hoof? I think you kind of hit on it, just the right place at the right time. Uh, and I'm talking about college football. Uh, you know, I, I'm a child of the 80s and 90s here in Atlanta. And if you were a kid in the 90s in Atlanta, that was prime time, prime time. You know, yeah. playing for the Falcons, playing for the Braves. So a huge primetime fan. Uh, but now, Coach Prime is the real deal. I mean, he has hit college football uh, at the right time for his skill set, has done yep. a great job uh, flipping the roster with the with the new portal in place and all those kind of things. But I think the thing that you watch um, and following him on social media, he's a real ball coach. Yeah. I mean, he's coaching ball. He's managing his assistants. He's uh, putting them in situations and with the, with the guys to have success. And I think, what, five penalties the whole game, first yeah. game. So, so the big takeaway for me is primetime coach prime is the real deal as a college ball coach. Yeah, that was that was the biggest question was the staff. You know, he's got, everybody's talking about the players that he's bringing in. You go get Sean Lewis, great who I thought had a hell of a game plan, knowing his offensive line was deficient, getting the ball out quick early, basically killed TCU's pass rush and gave Shadur more time. And then bringing in Charles Kelly, a guy who my father was very close friends with, a, a ton of respect for Coach Kelly, uh, the D.C. over there. But from an organizational standpoint, <clears throat> personnel standpoint, uh, just balance and, and, and not accountability, but – Guys knew where they were supposed to be. It was incredible, and they wanted it more. That they, was the thing, and that starts with coaching. They went into TCU and wanted that more. But why don't we just start with that game? Then? Let's do it. We're yeah. going to pick five games. We want you to pick five games with us. Why don't we just start with Nebraska now goes to Colorado. So if you thought there was a lot of excitement last week, <laughs> you're going to get a home game now with Deion Sanders? How do you guys see this one going? Yeah, they haven't been as this excited in Colorado since Peyton Manning was playing quarterback in Denver. Uh, my pick, Ed, again, there's a lot of weak run overreaction. I think these are two totally conflicting styles. You've got what Colorado wants to do, be up tempo, 
turn it into a Globe Trotters game, try and win a track meet. Then Nebraska, you know, Jeff Sims struggles to be accurate most of the time. He's great with his legs. He's really good at extending the play. And Matt Rule does a really good job of getting every inch out of every player that he has on that roster. I think Nebraska is going to try and limit possessions. Talking about that new clock rule, I think you're going to see a lot of quarterback design runs. Colorado gave up almost 10 yards of rush in the second half against TCU. Uh, so I am going to pick Nebraska in this game. I'm going to go against uh, a lot of the fields across the country. Everybody's super high on prime. This, de- this isn't a death sentence for Colorado or saying that, oh, no, they're, they're actually really bad. But I think Nebraska controls the clock. I think they win by a field goal as time expires. Blaine, you had you had Colorado winning at least five games this year. This is You're one the of only one that picked. So you, who are you taking now? This is one of them. I'm staying with the Buffs, baby. Wow. Give me Shadur Sanders and the boys. This is the thing. Jeff Sims can't throw the ball. Mm-hmm. He can't pass, and I think they're going to run. But sooner or later, Jeff Sims going to have to make a couple throws for them to get him over the top in this game. This game's at Colorado, correct? Yes. Yep. First game, home game, prime. Van Horn, Sanders, Travis Hunter, 130 plus snaps. I think they're a better football team than Nebraska. Coach, how are you feeling about th- about this one? I, I, got, I got to stand up for my boy Jeff Sims. And yeah. I recruited him. That's right, him at up. Georgia Tech. Yeah. And I absolutely love him. Uh, made two decisions that I know he wished he could have back, especially the one on the last drive. But a great competitor. Uh, he's going to bounce back. He's going to have a great game. Uh, but the cool thing is, this is talking about 80s and 90s. Colorado, Nebraska on Saturday yeah. is must see. And yeah. I don't know if you've been to say that for a while, but it is must see TV on Saturday. And uh, just excited to, to watch this game. Uh, Coach Prime has been talking a bunch about how this game is personal. You know, the rivalry is personal. And Matt Rule, he and I are the closest of friends. We were together at Albright College, we were together at Western Carolina. Wow. We were both head coaches at Temple University. So this one's personal for me. I got, even though I think the world of Coach Prime and what they're doing, Come I got to go with, with, you know, uh, the black shirt defense. I got to go with wow. Jeff Sims. I got to go with my main man, Matt Rule. Yeah, remember and Nebraska I, was favorited before this game, before Colorado played TC. Right at now, the end of the game, it went yeah. from Nebraska being a favorite to it. And absolutely honestly, I don't think that line's crazy. Colorado's favored by three now. I, this was the toughest game to pick for me. I went back and watched every snap of the Nebraska and Minnesota game. Nebraska, very good on stopping the run, but still, that Cali McManus kid from Minnesota, he carved them up a little bit, and I think Shadur Sanders proved that, hey, he's every bit the real deal. They do have playmakers on the outside. I don't think this is a fluke. I think that Deion Sanders is going to build something special at Colorado. I just look at, you were giving up 10 yards of rush on the outside. TCU gave you some favors on the offensive side of the ball by really not sticking to that running game, especially when it got late. And on the defensive side of the ball, only trying to pressure from depth. Now, good thing, Shadur Sanders made, you know, he he made you, he made up, you know, was identifying man coverage, uh, hitting big plays down the field. I'm just wondering if Jeff Sims and them chew a lot of clock in the That's ground That's what game I think they're going to do. keep that high-powered offense on the side. We saw Colorado win a shootout when both teams are scoring. Can they win an ugly, gritty game? That's my biggest question. Right now, I'm going to take Nebraska, but I do so with not that much confidence. Per- permission to make a basketball reference? Please. I, I, You know in college basketball, you don't see this in the NBA really, but in college basketball, when you have a team like Virginia that plays a team that's that's very up-tempo, you have those teams that want to get in transition, get the rebound and run, sure. go turn it into a track meet, and then you have the other teams that just sit there and dribble the mm-hmm. clock. Dribble the shot clock down, limit your possessions, keep you at one shot and flip it. I feel like that's the way Nebraska is going to approach it. It doesn't let you get in the rhythm. Don't let you get in the rhythm. sideline, for sure. All right, let's go to our next one here. We got uh, Texas A&M at Miami. What an awesome non-conference matchup we get in week two. How are you going with this one, Jay? Uh, Man, this is one where I, I, even though, and and we talked about this, you know, on on Thursday, led the show off with it. I, even though it was against lesser opponents in New Mexico and then Miami, Ohio, playing Miami of Florida in the Confusion Bowl, I, I thought both teams looked a lot cleaner. I, I thought they looked a lot more physical. I thought they looked a lot more crisp. I feel like that that Miami is more, more in Mario's image this year with what they have up front. They're young and they're talented. Restrepo's good on the outside. They've got three backs they can rely on. Ran for 250 against Miami, Ohio. I know it's not exactly the steel curtain defense, okay, but Miami was very dysfunctional mm-hmm. on offense last year and Van Dyke looked hurt all year. He looked as healthy as I've seen him. He was moving around well, extends the play inside the pocket as well as anybody in the country. Then on the A&M side, 
Bobby Petrino looks like it's more fun on offense. Connor Wegman looks like he is who he thought he was. I think this is going to be a tight matchup. I think it's going to come down to who can stop the run. And a lot of times, that's what the game comes down to. I feel like AM with McKinley Jackson, with Shamar Stewart, with the rest of the, the, the Globinauts they got up front, are going to be able to slow Miami down enough where the play action shot doesn't kill them. I like Texas AM by six in this game. Give me Texas AM. 31, or excuse me, 32-26. Okay. Weird score. How about you, Blaine? It's a tough game to pick. The more I like it, the more I like a and I think um, both these offensive lines are extremely good. Both these teams up front on both sides of the ball are extremely good. But my difference to me in this game is going to be the guy they brought in during the offseason. That's Bobby Petrino. One thing Bobby does a great job is isolating his best players on the outside. Matchups. You saw that with the receivers and what they did last week. Connor Wegman looked comfortable. Efficiency was to the max. Van Dyke did look good, did throw one interception, but I do think Miami's still a year away. I like to play this game up to Texas A&M, minus six and a half. Coach, you staying with the ACC here? So it's going to be interesting if the buy one, get one free deal uh, is going to pay dividends for Miami and the Hard Rock Casino. <laughs> <laughs> They packed that thing. That, that's, a, that's a tough environment to play in. Um, and me and Mario go way back. We won a championship together when we were, he was the head coach at FIU. I was the defense coordinator. Uh, but I do think the Texas A&M roster is probably one to two years ahead of where mm -hmm. uh, Mario's got that thing right now. And I, I have full confidence in him bringing the U back to national promise, prominence, winning a championship. Uh, but to, to, to the point, if Bobby Petrino is allowed to do his magic, th this could be a championship team now. Yeah. And, you know, I think both have elite level defenses. Uh, the, the, the thing that's going to win this game is which offense shows up and balls out and put lights up the scoreboard. Um, so with that, I'm going to go with Texas A&M. This yeah. was already a fun matchup last season just because of the brands. Now it's a fun matchup because of the brands, and both of these teams, I think, are more than competent. Sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with it. Let's just go chalk here around the board, Texas A&M, for the same reasons, a little bit farther ahead. And I'll tell you, that Connor Wegman kid, man, when the ball comes out of his arms, he looks like the real deal. The touchdown-to-interception ratio, ratio is crazy. But if Miami rushes for 250 again, yeah. they're going to make it. Well, I, you, don't forget, Restrepo didn't play last year. Evan Stewart was suspended last year. You, you've got all the weapons at the ready for this game, ready to fire. Buckle up, but boys. Fun. Miami's starting to look like Miami. Yeah, again. that's exactly right. And, I mean, and that's fun. Give kudos to coach for that. And that's fun. Oregon goes to Texas Tech. We've been talking about it all <laughs> summer long. Are you sticking with uh, Texas Tech in the upset despite losing week one? Look, I love Joey McGuire. Um, you know, Texas Tech is a team that I've been high on. They went to Wyoming. It went great early. Kind of looks like they relaxed mm -hmm. a little bit. It gave Wyoming some hope, didn't step on their throat, and Wyoming was able to come back and drag it in the deep end of the pool and, and win in two overtimes. Um, but I sat right here in this chair mm -hmm. during the offseason and said that Texas Tech was going to beat Oregon week two. Yeah. For a couple reasons. One, Lubbock loves their football. You ever been out there and seen a game? They absolutely love it. Uh, it. It's a place that you can't have success. I like the speed that Texas Tech has. I like the confidence. Even though they lost to Wyoming, I think they're going to be chomping at the bit to come out in this game. I guarantee you the last thing Dan Lanning and Oregon wanted was for them to go out and lose to Wyoming. Yeah. They probably would have rather them beat them by 40. I think they're pissed off. This is now your chance. We talked about LSU. You got to play Grambling this week. You beat them by 70. Nobody feels better. The best way to come back from getting upset is to be able to go upset somebody yourself. I think Texas Tech's pissed off. I picked him to win in the offseason, and I'm sticking with it. There he Joey McGuire and the boys this weekend at home in Lubbock take down the Ducks. Sorry, not sorry, Dan Lanning. Sorry, not sorry, Gordon Bombay. And Charlie, don't trust your mom. So give me Texas Tech. The Where's our Texas Lubbock. Tech gear, man? We got some hats around here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. give me Texas Tech. All right, B. No. <laughs> Oregon's going to win. Just Oregon's no. going to win this game. Just no. Look, and I was big on Texas Tech. I think finishing 9-3 uh, and three or something along the lines of that. Defense didn't look great against Wyoming. Did not look great. And once that second half hit, looked like an entire, uh, entirely different defense. I thought the Tyler Show kid played good. Played okay. 300-plus yards. Transferred from? <clears throat> True. Oregon. Um, three touchdowns, one pick. But this Oregon roster is one of the best in the nation. What Dan Lanning's building in Oregon is going to be a dynasty. Uh, wherever Dan go, uh, it's going dynasty. to be a Capital dynasty, D. I believe. Clip I believe that. so. You can clip that all you want.
But what does Dan bring you? He brings you the defensive side of the ball. I don't care you beat Portland State by a million. If you watch Oregon as a program and as a roster from quarterback to receiver to tackle to DN to linebacker to corner to safety, they're an extremely good football team. I think that I don't know what the spread is exactly right now. I'd have to go look. It's minus six and a half Oregon. You go slam that spread. You can play this game up to ten and a half. Man. Really? So it's a Duck Dynasty. Yeah, it's a Duck Dynasty. It's wow. a Dan Landing Duck Dynasty. Wow. Coach? Uh, I think the world is Joey McGuire. He was with Matt Rule over at Baylor, mm -hmm. and I think he's the right man for the job with the mm -hmm. Red Raiders. But any team that drops 81 on somebody, you got to <laughs> oh, go man. with them. And I mean, the, the <laughs> Matt did 500 push-ups. They had to wow. hydrate him. The Oregon uniforms are going to be hot on Saturday. Mm -hmm. The weather is going to be hot on Saturday. I hope they keep the mascot hydrated. Oh, uh, yeah, but I got, I got to go with the Oregon Ducks. Yep. Uh, same, same with me. I love Coach McGuire. He's a, fan, right. a friend of the show, oh, fan okay. of the show. But yeah. Bodacious is trying to go to New York in December. Yes, yeah, sir. That's what he's, he's got the binoculars yeah, out. Like, how can I get to New York at the end of this season? Yeah. I'm going to take the Oregon Ducks. We got Ole Miss going on the road at Tulane. We talked about this one might be a closer matchup in the offseason, but now you're thinking it may be a little bit heavier Ole Miss. Well, I, look, I, I watched Tulane and Michael Pratt look great. You know, he's 14 out of 15, very efficient. Um, all, they're all, a lot of their offensive lines back. I, I think they'll be able to protect them against Ole Miss. I think Tulane will be able to score. What worries me is Tulane can't stop the run. And if you can't stop the run with a guy like Quinshawn Junkins and the way that Lane can take advantage of you not being balanced on defense and being able to, to at least you know take away the, the main part. I think everybody confuses Lane Kiffin's offense with, with a super air raid. I want to throw it around a ton. I think they do the same thing with Lincoln Riley. Lane wants to run the ball yeah. at the end of the day. Quinshawn had 1,500 and, yards rushing. Yeah, like. and, and if Tulane can't stop the run, you, you talk about the Waffle House menu being open. You can go get an all-star special. You can go get whatever. Lane's going to be able to call whatever he wants and it's going to be able to work. So Tulane will have a lot of momentum. This is going to be a great uniform form off but I wish hell if they could both wear baby powder blue I wish they could but you can't um but I like Ole Miss in this game I like them to cover uh even if it's at seven and a half I, I think Lane and them are going to put 50 on them not that Tulane won't score 31 34 points uh interesting to see how Pete's defense looks over there uh, since he came over from Alabama but I just don't see Tulane being able to I mean look Ole Miss on offense now the, the group of receivers they got especially the guys that transferred in that's they look scary to me. Mercer is not a walk-in-the-park FCS team. I mean, they got some cats that can play. They're a top-20 FCS team. But uh, give me Ole Miss. Give me Ole Miss by a lot. Okay. Yeah, this was one of my locks of the week right here. Um, Ole Miss sitting at seven. Some books have it at six and a half. The thing about it, I love Tulane. I love what they're doing. Pratt's great. But Taji Spears isn't there anymore. Dorian Williams isn't there anymore. Those guys are in the NFL. You had two top-tier players on your team who got drafted in the first and second round, which you don't see a lot in Tulane. So I'm playing this game up to almost nine and a half, ten and a half for Ole Miss. Jackson Dart looked phenomenal. Lane Kiffin and the boys give me Ole Miss and to cover. Coach, any chance for an upset here? Uh, not so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Just a side note, man. You guys do a really good job with this, man. A lot of the points that I was going to make, you guys are already spouting them off. So uh, very impressed with the football knowledge on the show as always. Appreciate uh, it, bro. Willie Fritz. He mm. can coach some football. Yeah, we right? can. Won the conference championship last year, won the Sugar Bowl, beat the Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, I got to imagine a lot of Power 5 schools, you know, wanted to make a run at him, but credit to Tulane, credit to Coach Fritz, staying there through the championship game to get the ring. Uh, and Coach Kiffin has done a phenomenal job in this new era of college football. Uh, the Portal King bringing in some straight ballers uh, to Oxford, Mississippi. I've got four guys that played for me on that roster. Uh, <laughs> That's so, how you know, yeah. Guys that are that are going to be playing for them. Uh, but I think the biggest key to this game, uh, both offenses are really good. But I think Pete Golding's defense and the Land Sharks, uh, mm -hmm. that's going to be the key to this game. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the interesting Matt, things is the, the stadium capacity is, what, 30,000? Yep. And so just being from being in an SEC school before, sometimes the SEC guys walking into a 30,000-seat stadium, it's a little bit different than those 100K yeah. environments. That do. So if they can handle that, and start fast and Pete and the Landshark defense 
uh, can put on a show early, uh, I, I got to go with the Rebels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's well, one, yeah. one thing to walk into Chops, it's another to walk into Sizzler. <laughs> that, that you know, and I love Sizzler. Those are right? different, but they are different. And and we had circled this game for the last couple months because it's at Tulane, right? Yep. And then obviously they can play football, man. They've been you know uh, leading really one of the FCS leaders for the last couple seasons. And I was watching both teams this past week, you know, just looking, saying like, oh, is there any? Can I get any sort of optimism to take Tulane in this game since they're since they're hosting Ole Miss and Ole Miss just put up such a statement that I just I can't do it. Yeah, I gotta well, take Ole Miss, man. It just looks so good. Yeah, and and look, Tulane played really well against South Alabama. Yeah, I, I don't want it. Will, Willie Fritz beat our ass upside down when I was at South Alabama when he was at Georgia Southern. Every time we had to play those cats, defending his style of offense and the way he's been able to evolve it. Uh, and, and Tulane, South Alabama, Coach Womack, Kane does yeah, a really good job. That's, yeah. a, that's a good team, and, and they handled South Alabama. Well, again, what we were talking about when Notre Dame played Navy, right? We're not, we're not looking at the score. Of course, Ole Miss was going to beat Mercer by a lot of points, right? Now, 70, when you start getting into the 70s, like Coach said about Oregon, that, that's di- there's a difference winning by 40 and winning by 70. But still, Still, regardless of how many points they win by, I was looking for mental mistakes in the pocket yeah. or turnovers or maybe lack of energy. None of that stuff was there. So to me, in this one going in, I have to take Ole Miss, and I think they're going to be on a roll. Just like at the beginning of last season, what they start last year? 6-0? and Yeah. 7-0? and yeah. Something like that. Struggle towards the back half of the schedule a little bit more. That's what I'm more interested to see from Lane Kiffin. I think Ole Miss is going to get off to another hot start. Let's go to the game of the week, the Texas Longhorns. Here we go. Go to Tuscaloosa and play the Crimson Tide, boys. Yeah. Texas against Rice, you know, Quinn was 0 was for 7 uh, on downfield passing, had a couple mistakes up front. And the first game of the year, it's hard to overlook the first game of the year when you've waited all offseason to play that first game. You know, it's, it's not like a trap game because it's the first game. But I think it's a little bit different. And when you go back and watch it, I think Sark played it very close to the vest. I think they were very peanut butter and jelly on offense and really on defense too. If you go back and look at the amount of coverages and the amount of different fronts they get uh, gave, even with the different personnel groupings that they were getting from Rice. But it's one thing to play Bama in week two on the road. I picked Texas to go undefeated this year. I picked Texas to make the college football playoff. You have to have Heisman opportunities to have Heisman moments. Sure. I think this is the this is the type game that that Quinn Ewers is made for. You saw what he did in the first half last week. Going on the road, it's going to be a crazy environment. Alabama's a really good football team. When you recruit that well, you're going to have good football teams. Jalen Milroe did what he had to do in game one against Middle Tennessee. He hit open guys. He was able to out-athlete people on the ground. I just feel like the difference in this Texas team is their offensive line's older. They can ha- they can they they should be able to to at least stalemate Alabama up front to have some semblance of the run game with those young backs. You return five of your six top pass catchers. You've got a good tight end. You've got a quarterback that's had success against Bama before. I know Nick Saban grinds up former assistants. Winning at Bryant Denny is hard, not just because Bryant Denny's electric, but Bama's pretty daggum good. The players are pretty good. But I think Texas finds a way to go into Bryant Denny and win this game and shock a lot of people. A lot of people got on the Bama bandwagon late. I know they're huge up front. Texas isn't little. Mm-hmm. And I, I think Texas under isn't afraid of them. And this, they want to make a statement coming over to the SEC. I think Quinn Ewers and Steve Sarkeesian go into Alabama. Sark knows what Nick's going to do on defense, even with Kevin Steele there. Nick knows what Sark's going to do on offense. I mm-hmm. think it may be a little more low scoring than what people think. But I like Texas playing. Blaine, Texas lost us by one point last season at home with Quinn Ewers not playing the second half. I got Texas, Texas losing one game this season. And that's this game right This here. one. I think this is the day, the game, that Jalen Milrow is going to get thrown into stardom. Really? I think Jalen Milrow will be the difference in this game. You go back to Texas versus Rice. I know they played it close to the vest, but some questions. The offensive line is good, but made a lot of mental mistakes. Quinn Ewers missed some guys deep that usually don't see Quinn miss. I don't think Quinn's going to miss those this game. I think Quinn's going to play well. But I think Jalen Milrow is going to play better, and I believe in Alabama's defense more than I believe in Texas's defense. Alabama's front is a problem mm-hmm. on defense. And one thing they can do, if you get to Quinn, if you get to Quinn early, then you set the tone for the rest of the game. I think Saban's going to be ready. It's hard to go into Brian Denny and win. I think Jalen Milrow, three touchdowns, two through the air, and one on the ground. Coach Collins, anytime Nick Saban loses one game, the dynasty's dead. I, I don't know if you've heard that or not. <laughs> is, is this going to be one of those losses or no? So I think back to the point about the clock rule, I don't know what kind of magic Coach Saban has, but his whole thing this whole offseason was establishing the run, 
uh, grinding teams down because everybody's over adjusted to the spread, gotten smaller across the board on defense. And now coach is going big and going run heavy uh, with a quarterback that can run as well. Um, you know, so I think it's going to be very physical. Uh, Texas's defensive line coached by Bo Davis. They're, they're impressive. They and, you know, hold up. Uh, but in, in uh, Bryant Denny on college game day at night, Coach Saban, who's a confident as I've ever seen him, uh, I can't pick against Coach, so I'm going Alabama for the dub. Wow. Come on, Coach. Wow. I like it. Let's I go. like it. I, mean, I get it. I get Look, it 100%. After picking Alabama to lose two regular season games in the preseason, I have a lot of making up to do in my household. Oh, you know, yeah. With the wife and the Tell family. me, does he, he know who your father-in-law is? You know, my father-in-law is Richard Todd, okay? Quarter, hey. Played quarterback for Bear Bryant and for the Jets. So, yeah, I'm trying to get back in good graces, but of those two losses I had, this was not one of them. Mm -hmm. I think they take care of business against the Texas Longhorns. Now, if for some reason, this thing turns into a shootout and we start trading touchdowns, I think Jake is spot on. I think Quinn Ewers will make more plays, maybe has the ball last, they win the football game. I just don't think it'll it's, turn into a shootout. I think it's going to be one of those scrappy type games. I think Jalen Milrow is going to be good on the ground game. And, and look, he made, he made good decisions and good accurate throws last week. I think you'll see a lot more of that and turn into a scrappy game with Alabama Crimson Tide rolling. Notes, notes. Notes. Who's going to be healthy in that Alabama secondary? That's well, Malachi Moore's beat up. They, they got practice up. kids they beat practice that game. so far. So, so. That's, a, that's something we'll to be see. watching. If you are a gambling man, watch those secondary injuries. Well, limit, limited is a real thing. That's, that's a real yeah, world. Yeah. I, I do, but before we wrap up here, I want to give a shout out to Coach Kenny at Texas State. Uh, for what they did going yeah. to Dave Aranda and Baylor, coming over from Incarnate Word. If you hadn't seen what he's done at Incarnate Word, guy can coach some ball. What he did for TJ Finley after what I watched TJ Finley, mm -hmm. what, what he was at LSU and then Auburn, and now what he was at Texas State. I think PFF had seven big-time A-type throws, uh, which is a lot for one game. Those guys punched way above their weight, got a lot of guys in the transfer portal. But... Coach Collins, man, it's always so great to talk some ball with you, man. Uh, I know you're a busy guy. We love getting you on here. You're a guy that understands it on a level that, that you know, our audience, that they love that type stuff. And uh, we really appreciate you being our celebrity guest picker. Appreciate it, guys. And the, and the shirt, let's there go. There it is, sir. <laughs> Keep there it is. It, baby. That's exactly right. Everybody go grab some merch from the Crane & Company store. But, Coach, enjoy the football watching this weekend, and thank you again. Thanks, guys. See y'all. Make sure you subscribe. Subscribe.